Now, just like the previous videos, this is gonna start out very simple. The contrast brushes and deformation options are pretty simple. Of course, there's a little bit more deep diving we can do. So if you just want the basics, stick with this one for the first minute. So we're gonna go in here, tool palette, sphere 3D, drag out a sphere, go into edit mode, make a poly mesh 3D. And under the geometry tab, let's go ahead and hit divide until you got, you know, maybe half a million polygons. Actually, your active points will be over here. Uh, and now I just need something to add some contrast. So let's make some like skin. I'm gonna take my standard brush. I'm gonna switch this to a spray stroke and we're gonna throw in what I keep calling the craggy alpha. Uh, it's this alpha 60 over here, this is a lined alpha. We're just gonna spray some lines and actually hold down, let's drop our intensity down just a bit, maybe to 15, hold down alt. And now we've got kind of a nice skin texture in here. If you want, switch over to your clay brush and that's gonna be for you BCL. You can go in here and you can use your clay brush to kind of go through and maybe add some variations or even your standard brush, go back to your standard brush, take that alpha off, go back to your dot stroke. Uh, and in here, go into your stroke, you have your lazy rate. If you if you crank that up, you'll get a nice smooth stroke with your standard brush. Uh, let's take our Z intensity up to maybe 30. And then for the stroke, just tap L, that'll turn your lazy mouse off. And now you can go through here and you can just kind of like, you know, pop in uh, some details here, maybe hold down Alt and you can pop in some, you know, not, not necessarily poor detail, but you can do poor detail if you want to. You can actually go in here to like maybe alpha 40. Grab this as a spray stroke, hold down alt. You can like punch in pores, just make your Z intensity a little lower. So I don't know, go nuts, make some skin. Now at this point, you may be like, okay, this skin was looking pretty good when my face was rubbed up all against it. But now when I back it out, it's like, oh, it's not really gonna read from that distance. I gotta 3D print this thing or bake it out uh, in engine. It's gotta really, I gotta pump up the jam on this, right? So that's where contrast comes in. And where that is now in ZBrush 2021.5 is over here under deform the deformation menu. There's a new contrast slider. So if you crank that up to the right, it's going to eventually hit a cap, you know, a contrast of 100. But you're going to see it's going to really kind of punch in that detail, whether it went up or down. If you, you know, pump the, uh, the pores up or down or the, the skin crags or skin wrinkles, it's going to enhance all those. Now I let go of that slider and I can I can keep doing that. So I got contrast, 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 and it'll keep going. But generally speaking, you know, you this is your original sculpt. You just want to crank up some contrast, boom, you're done. Now, of course, you can localize that. You can go in here, you can hold down control, you can mask an area, hold down control and tap in your document to invert that mask and then you know just you know up the contrast or in that area. And you're gonna notice if I go negative contrast, it's actually gonna run like a polish or a smooth effect. Now there's another option available for you. If I hit the B key on my keyboard and then I hit C to narrow it down to the brushes that start with C, you're gonna see I have contrast delta and contrast target. So those are two new brushes. So I'm gonna tap uh, B, C, Y or just tap contrast delta and then B, C, Z for contrast target. And if you have your brush menu docked over here on the left, if you don't, you know, if it's closed over here, just double click that little divider here, take your brush menu, take the little white circle and throw it over here. And now you're gonna have a little, actually your buttons will probably be wider. You'll actually be able to read these names, but here's contrast delta and contrast target. So recently used brushes will be right there. So we'll start with contrast target. Now what this brush does is exactly the same thing as the contrast slider does. When I crank it up to 100, if I undo that and then use contrast target, if I just brush over my mesh, it'll basically just kind of brush in contrast wherever I brush in. Now it is gonna stop. Um, so if I undo that and then they start, you know, I'm just kind of using my tablet and just kind of brushing, brushing, brushing all over in the same spot. It's not doing anything, it's hitting a peak, it's hitting a limit and then stopping. If I let go of my tablet and then go back in here and keep doing it, it's gonna add more contrast, let go, come back in, add more contrast. So contrast target is like having a local version of your contrast slider. You just, wherever you brush this in, it's gonna dial that contrast in. Or if you hold down Alt, it's going to do that kind of polish brush. You have actually have a local polish um, capability in a brush just by holding down Alt. Now if you go over here to Contrast Delta, that's going to be like the difference between clay and clay buildup. To kind of show that, if I go to my clay brush really quickly, if I use clay and just keep rubbing over the same area, it's not really going to build up that much. If I use clay buildup and I rub over the same area, it's going to continue building it up as, as far as I as far as it can really. So it's going to keep building up in that same spot. Same thing with contrast target, which is I can keep rubbing it and it's not gonna add any more unless I come back in on top of it uh, with a separate stroke. But with contrast delta, what I can do is if I keep 
adding contrast to a certain area, it's just gonna keep building up that contrast. Same thing if I hold down Alt. Now this is gonna be interesting. When I hold down Alt and use Contrast Delta, it's gonna smooth, but eventually it's gonna invert the original uh, mesh. So if you go down here and hold down Alt in a large area and kind of do this, it'll actually invert it. You can actually get some pretty cool effects with that. I'll bring up an example later of that. But that's it. That's the basics of contrast uh, brushes and contrast sliders uh, in a nutshell. Only took about five minutes. That's the basics. If that's all you need, get out of this video. If you want to dig a little bit deeper, you can stick here with me. So we're going to go in here to load tool. And again, like we did earlier, I'm going to bring in an old an old project. I love going, you know, once we have new features with ZBrush, I always go through my old projects to see if there's anything great that I can use uh, to really kind of go through and make my uh, previous models a little bit nicer. So anything in this case, since we have contrast and, you know, 2021 with our cloth stuff, uh, if you go back through the old, the videos we just did, we took this old model and we really helped out some of this kind of lackluster cloth and lackluster wrinkles on the face. So go back and watch those videos. In this one, we're going to focus a little bit more on contrast. So again, I'm going to alt tap this head here. So we'll go back to one of your old projects or sculpt something with a little bit of uh, skin detail on it. And again, go in here. I mean, it, hell, if you just need this to read a little bit more in your 3D print, go in here, contrast, zoop, boom, there you go. More contrast. You can over crank the contrast too if you want to. Now, there are some other options for you. In fact, uh, in ZBrush 2021, they added underneath macro here, if you go to macros, there's an enhanced detail. So just click that. That'll run some processes. And there we go. We got some enhanced details here. Now this isn't the exact same as the contrast slider, but what it does, if we go in here, and in fact, if you're brand new to ZBrush 2021 or any version of ZBrush since 4R8, ZBrush 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, you can go to my YouTube channel, click on my playlist, go check those out, go to my Airstation page, same deal. And if you go here to ZBrush 2021, for example, here's 63 videos on the new features. And if you scroll all the way down, you see the very last detail, or the very last video here is uh, enhanced detail. So we've already covered this. But since it's kind of relevant to the contrast brushes, I figured I'd bring it up again. So here, if we go in here to layers, here's our original. We can dial back this. And in fact, you can do the invert of that. And you can also turn these off. So you can get rid of the enhanced if you want to. Or you can go down here and over crank the enhanced. So if that's useful to you, then feel free to use that macro. It's just another option available to you. If you don't need any of these, you can just turn these eyeballs off. I'm sorry, turn off enhanced, go in here and hit bake all, and then you're back to where you started. So now, like I said before, let's dive a little bit deeper into the functionality of these contrast brushes. Again, we're talking about contrast delta and contrast target. So let's go with contrast delta. And if you go over here again, we can just brush on these areas and it's really gonna increase that contrast. And in fact, when I do it over these, it's really gonna kind of take those little molehills and turn them into mountains. And you may be thinking, oh, can I over crank this effect? Well, you can't really over crank it, but you can speed it up. And that's where the Z intensity comes in place. So if you crank the Z intensity up to 100, uh, it's going to take just very, very light brush strokes to get uh, to that over cranked uh, contrast delta effect. It's not really over cranking the effect. It's just getting you there faster with a little bit less work. And if you go in here to modifiers, this brush modifier also, also plays a role. So we crank this brush modifier up to 100. Brush modifier is going to dial in a stronger contrast level. So you know what, to show this a little bit better, let's go to a contrast target because what that's going to do is allow us to kind of cap uh, the contrast amount. So here the brush modifier is set to 25. And if we brush over our model, uh, it's only going to go to that much contrast. If I crank up the Z intensity, it's not going to over crank it. It's literally just going to get you to that capped amount faster. So we turn this back down to 25 or whatever. Now, if we go over here to brush modifier, if we turn this to zero and we use contrast, you're going to see it kind of does like a high pass effect. There's not a whole lot of contrast going in. However, if I crank this up to its original amount, which I think was around 25, you're going to see, okay, we're getting some decent contrast. If I crank it up to 100, you might be getting a slightly more contrasty amount. And these work hand in hand kind of with uh, Z intensity. Z intensity is getting you there faster. Uh, the brush modifier is cranking up the contrast amount. So again, if we, you know, move this down to like six, you know, you're not going to get that much contrast. If you keep cranking this up, you're going to get uh, more contrast. So if you see these horns uh, coming out. They're going to get higher and higher until it caps out at 100, basically. And Z intensity, if you crank this down, it's going to take you a while. You know, it goes Z intensity of one. It's going to take you a couple 
uh, a couple strokes to kind of max out that amount. However, if you take this, let's undo that. If you take the Z intensity up to 100, very quickly it's going to get you to the contrastiest version of this brush. Boom. Now you can also, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it kind of, it's, it's, it's a slight hesitation before you start adding contrast. What it's doing is every time you lay down a stroke, ZBrush is storing a target contrast for your mesh when you're using the uh, contrast target. So you're going to go stroke and it's going to say, okay, this is my target contrast and boom, there it is. There's my target contrast. If you let go and then you lay down another stroke, it's going to set another target contrast and then it's going to hit that amount. Now this is where it can kind of get a little bit weird. So you have, let's uh, crank our Z intensity back to something like 25 here. So we have our brush modifier slider and then we also have Z add and Z sub. So now, if brush modifier, you see we can go into the negative brush modifiers. So if you have a negative brush modifier and we have Z add, so negative, positive, think of it in those terms, those, those, those disagree. Whenever they disagree, you're gonna get a smoothing effect with these brushes. However, if I go to brush modifier in a positive amount, positive, positive, Z add is positive, Z sub is subtra uh, negative, let's say. Now it's going to have a contrast effect. So as long as these agree, you'll get a contrast effect. If they disagree, for example, if I have a positive brush modifier and a negative, now we're gonna get a smooth effect. In fact, if you wanna get really weird, we can go Z sub to a negative brush modifier and you're gonna get a contrast effect because again, these agree. Negative and negative equals contrast. They're in agreement. Positive and Z add positive, they're in agreement, contrast. Positive, negative, they're in disagreement, smooth. Of course, that's probably a little bit weird to think about, so probably what you're gonna do is just keep your brush modifier where it is, there's the intensity where it is. You want more contrast, great. If you don't want contrast, hold down Alt, that switches it to Z sub under the hood, and now these are in disagreement, now it's gonna smooth out. That makes sense. So don't overthink it. It's interesting there, the, you know, how that works, but in reality, Alt's gonna smooth, not holding down Alt's gonna add contrast. That's easy enough. And if you wanna over crank, not over crank, if you wanna speed up that process, go in here to your Z intensity, boom, you have a very fast contrast. If you wanna get the most contrast you possibly can, crank up that brush modifier, there's the most contrast with the fastest speed. Now you can try and do some stuff like this. If you go in here to contrast delta, you can see it's gonna add a lot of contrast uh, to your model here. Let's take that brush modifier down a bit, or you know, you can just go in here to brush the very bottom here, reset current brush, we're back to the default values here. So we're adding uh, contrast here using contrast delta. You can kind of go in here, maybe to your depth here and turn on your depth mask. So if you wanna only apply contrast in certain areas, you can try you know, cranking uh, this little bottom area up so you, you can maybe only add contrast to the top parts. Or you can invert that and only add contrast to the negative parts in here. You can kind of play around with that. And or you can go in here to say, masking we can do like a mask by cavity go in here to your cavity profile if you want to and you can kind of modify this however you'd like um, and then you can go through here and you can just add contrast in the masked areas or control tap to invert that mask and then just add contrast in the wrinkle areas now if you want to see what you're doing a little bit better go in here to the masking and turn off view mask so now you can see we're just masking the areas that aren't wrinkles control tap to invert Turn off view mask, we're just adding contrast in the areas that are wrinkles. And then control drag to uh, get rid of your mask or just hit clear. Now these do work with different strokes. So if we go to contrast delta here uh, and drag dot, uh, it's not gonna seem like it's doing anything. So go up here to your Z intensity. And in fact, let's go over here to brush modifiers and crank that up. So we're getting the biggest effect. And now as we drag this around, you're gonna see it's gonna give you uh, kind of that rolling effect. That's kind of neat. You can kind of go through here and kind of just add contrast in a, uh, a little area that you're basically drag dotting around. You can also change that to drag rect and just add contrast to a, a shrinking or expanding value uh, within a certain area. Let's go ahead and undo that. And there is one more thing I wanna talk about. So contrast delta is a little bit different than contrast target in another way. If you hold down alt uh, and contrast target, it's gonna smooth to that target amount. However, contrast delta doesn't have a target amount. So when you hold down um, alt to smooth, it'll start smoothing. Let's change that back to dot stroke. It'll start smoothing, but then it'll invert, like I said before. So let's, uh, you know what, let's go back here and here to keep doing this. Brush, reset current brush until they get the default value. So again, if I hold down alt, it'll start smoothing, and then it'll invert that and give you uh, the basically the inverse of 
these details here. So you can actually use that to kind of a cool effect. If you want to get kind of a webbing effect, you can go through here and hold down Alt with Contrast Delta, and then you'll get, again, more of a kind of webbed look. There we go. So if that's useful to you, uh, feel free to use that. And if you missed the earlier videos in this series, of course you can use this with the new thick skin feature. So we can turn on thick skin, uh, set that thickness to say maybe four or five, go in here with your contrast delta brush, crank up that intensity, that brush modifier to really maximize that effect, and it's going to cap itself out. So instead of really pushing out those into those little sharp horns, it's going to cap it at level of four or whatever you dial this in. If you want a less of effect, there you go. You just get a little bit of contrast or if you want a lot of that effect, crank up that number and now it'll cap itself out at a later value. And in fact, now that we discussed that, let's uh, go back to our undo here. Let's turn our thick skin back on, give it a very small amount. And then if you hold down alt with that contrast delta, it's going to cap it. And now you get a very cool kind of muddy effect. That's a really easy way to kind of go through here and get kind of a lava mud flow uh, kind of look just by capping that. Neg uh, hold down Alt Contrast Delta with a thick skin for kind of a web effect.